Well, good morning and welcome to another edition of Thought for the Day from New Milton Evangelical Free Church. And we're going to be looking again at the book of Haggai and uh, we'll be reading chapter 2, verses 6 to 9. But let's pray before we do so. I hunger and I thirst. Jesus, my manna be. The living waters burst out of the rock for me. O oh, bruised and broken bread, my lifelong wants supply. As living souls are fed, O oh, feed me or I die. Father, we come to you hungry, thirsty, wanting to be filled with your truth again, want to be renewed in your life, wanting to walk in your light. And we just ask, Father, that as we look at your word now, you equip us for this day and help us to stand in him who saves us so that the world can see he lives. Amen. So let's read Haggai, sorry, Haggai chapter 2 and verse 6 onwards. This is what the Lord Almighty says, In a little while I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land, I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty, and in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Who is speaking to you this morning? Is it a mere man, this David White person? No, he is only an instrument. What is important is that you hear this word from God's word, spoken by the Lord Almighty the one who is sovereign over heaven and earth, the one who rules nations, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, in whose hand is all power and might, so that nothing can withstand his will. It's he who speaks to you this morning. So what is he saying in this passage from God's word? Well, we need to remember, as at all times, that all of these old covenant uh, components are actually pictures of Jesus. They outline for us something about the Son of God that tell us more about his person and his work when it was time for God to send him into our world. And therefore, they can equip us with a deep knowledge and insight into what he has done for us and who we are in him. The Lord Almighty speaks. So to this people who were rebuilding their temple and to whom the building work must have seemed so diminutive so that what they were constructing would appear more like a shack compared to a mansion when you compared it to Solomon's temple in all its glory. And they may very well have been discouraged as you and I might when we see the small number of Christians in our world, the way that Christian faith and standards are deprecated by government and laws and society around us. When we talk to others and we speak of our faith and we are so easily dismissed or disregarded or even scorned and rejected. Yes, it's easy to be discouraged, but then God's measuring rod is not ours. These people were tempted to measure the success of what they were doing by the size of what they were building, or how substantial it was, how strong it was, and by comparison it was so little compared to what had been. And be it the case nevertheless that by the time of Jesus, for 46 years, Herod the great had actually improved the temple so that its state at that time 
rivaled Solomon's temple, so much so the disciples boasted of it in Jesus' sight. And yet it was the Lord himself who said that shortly this whole place was to be raised to the ground and of this temple not one stone would remain upon another. A prophecy that was late, uh, shortly fulfilled in AD 70 when Jerusalem was sacked by the Romans. But God's measuring yard is not ours. What does he measure by then? Well, we see it here. He measures by his glory. You can't miss it, can you? The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Why? Because Herod would build it? No, because Jesus would come to it. And for us, we in the new covenant who do not have a physical temple, a building which we claim to be the place where we meet with God, God meets with us in Christ, his son. And he it is who fulfills every single promise of that old covenant world. Their temple, with all that it was or all that it wasn't, is replaced by the living, active, mediating Son of God, who is the place where we meet with the Father. So what of the building work? I borrow a phrase from John Piper, who says, you build more than you see. Let me say it again. You build more than you see. You see, it may seem to us as believers in Christ that what we're about is just so frail and fragile. Uh, is it really worth this morning as we get up in the morning thinking about how to live for him? We seem so defeated sometimes, don't we, by the things that go wrong in our lives or uh, defeated by the things that we try to be but fail in. The attitudes we have which so easily get self-centred and niggly and irritable mean and self-seeking, all of those things which seem to defeat the work of God in producing in us the character of Jesus which he promises us that we should be. But you are building what you do not see. You are building more than you see. And what God is doing in you while all this is going on is greater than your physical eyes will notice. One day it will be revealed when Jesus returns. And in that day, Hebrews 12, using these very verses, speaks about what God will do. That once more he will shake the heavens and the earth. And the once more indicates the removal of what was shaken. You see, it's a bit like when you come off the beach and uh, inevitably you have sand grains mixed in with your clothing. So you pick up your clothes, your jacket or whatever it might be, and you shake it and all the sand all falls out. Well, God's going to do that to the physical creation. At the last day when Jesus returns, he will remove from it all of the things which glorify him and keep them and the rest will be discarded. So God's measure is his glory. Let me ask you then, are you living for his glory today? In everything you do, in the way that you think, the way that you treat others, the way that you respond in situations, what is your measure? Is it the physical outcome, the riches you gain, the material possessions you accumulate, the, the house you live in, the government you follow? Is it any of these things and their success or failure weighs heavily upon you? and actually determines your mood. No, you build more than you see. And it's those things that are eternal. It's those things that are secure. It's those things that matter because all of the other things will pass away. But what you hide in Jesus will never pass away. Let's pray. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him against that day. So, Lord, walk with us this day, we pray. Ex ex exalt your name in our lives. Bring glory to Jesus in what we do and what we say and how we are. Amen.